for over 20 years. The Fast and the Furious movies have raced their way into the box office and evolved from grounded street racing drama to an anything goes universe where cars can go to space and everybody knows martial arts. What started as a high octane crime drama about fast cars and the underground racing community slowly morphed itself into a string of bombastic nitro fueled action movies that have audiences gasping at the thought of what comes next. And here at Joe Blow, we know one thing for sure. The Fast Saga is about much more than Coronas and Backyard Barbecues. It's a franchise with 10 installments to date. Well, actually 11, including Hobbs and Shaw. And across those films, there have been continuity changes, retcons, and fan service galore in the name of the most important thing in the Fast Saga's timeline. Family. While the Fast Saga has made mixed impressions on pop culture over its more than 20 year run of films, it's likely that you've seen at least one of these popular movies. And in today's episode, I'm going to be your guide in making sense of the entire saga so far and giving you our picks on which movies are worth watching and which ones can eat your dust. Let's go! Now, this franchise is very robust, and there's quite a timeline to cover, so we're going to be breaking this video down into two parts. I think of this video as covering the more grounded half of the franchise before we get into the more bizarre entries later in the franchise. So if you're ready, then fasten your seatbelts and throw down the pink slips, because I am about to tell you just what the f you need to know about the Fast and the Furious franchise. Only if you teach me how to drift. Say that negotiation. The Fast and the Furious franchise follows Brian O'Connor, an undercover police officer who aims to rise in the ranks of LA's underground street racing scene in order to infiltrate the Toretto family, a small time group of robbers led by Dominic Toretto. Throughout the 11 movie arc, the story shifts from focusing on Brian to focusing on Dom, as the franchise continued after the tragic death of Paul Walker in 2013, but the character of Brian O'Connor continues to be in the franchise. We'll definitely get into that later on, but as the movies progress, they go from a local gang of racing thieves to a family of elaborate super spies who have more in common with secret agents than street racers. The original film, The Fast and the Furious, shares a name with the the 1955 movie, but has nothing more in common with it. But the movie is, in many ways, a remake of the 1991 crime thriller, Point Break. This obviously makes sense, as the basic structure of the story is nearly identical. Also, Point Break rules. And as we do on this show, we are going to get you acquainted with the franchise's most iconic characters before we hit the NOS and race through this insane saga of super speedsters. Let's go! Brian O'Connor. Played by the late Paul Walker, Brian goes from rebel hotshot cop to friend and accomplice to the very family he's hunting. Eventually, he leaves the police and fully converts to life as a rogue. He's got an attitude, but he's also a charming everyman who always gets the job done. Brian also likes driving really fast and getting in fist fights, so, you know, typical main character in an action movie. Ah, oh, he's beautiful. I like his haircut. Dom Toretto. Vin Diesel is maybe best recognized for his role as the tank top wearing, bad guy stomping Dom Toretto. Dom is a street racer and the head of a gang that Brian is initially tracking but later joins. He's the glue of these movies, as without him, many of the movies would have nothing to latch onto story-wise. While definitely being the most memed character in the franchise, he's also the main ingredient that makes it all worth tuning in for. If nothing else, you can always laugh at how committed he is to this character, despite the ridiculous advancements that each movie displays. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Mia O'Connor. Mia is Brian's love interest and eventually the mother of his children, but she's also Dom's little sister. This causes a lot of static at the beginning, but later proves to be a sweet arc for the characters involved. Now it was crappy yesterday, it was crappy the day before, and guess what? It hasn't changed. Roman Pierce, Brian's childhood best friend and eventual recruit to the family. Rome is often the comic relief and always has a moment or two to shine. I mean, Tyrese Gibson just has so much charm as this character, doesn't he? 
You know, I caught you walking up in the club. You got the hamburger meat all hanging out. <laughs> you know? Tej. Luda. Tej is kind of the mechanical genius who partially makes up for Jesse from the first film. He can build anything with wheels and always comes through with an exciting gadget or feature that makes the gang's cars more exciting. Han. Han was the standout of the third film who ends up making quite an epic comeback later in the franchise. He's kind of the cool wild card who always has something smart to say. Letty. Michelle Rodriguez is always bringing fire and fierceness to her roles, but the character of Letty is balls out badass. She's Dom's lover, but also a valuable blunt force instrument for the team. I personally would not f with this woman. Hobbs. As if this franchise wasn't stacked enough already, Dwayne Johnson enters the franchise as a take no shit FBI agent who aims to take down the Toretto family. Along the way, his character faces his own trials, which bring him to joining the crew from time to time to get in on the action. Shaw. This is really a classic role for Jason Statham. He plays a highly trained agent with snappy remarks and a grudge for many of the other characters. He's also a total badass. And of course, there are many more interesting characters throughout this franchise to look into, and even more badass cars to keep an eye out for, which we may or may not be talking about more later. But for now, we've met the crew, now let's talk about the first four movies. The Fast and the Furious is actually still my favorite in the entire saga so far. This movie follows Brian as he works undercover to infiltrate and take down Dom's crime ring, which at this time is just robbing delivery trucks and stealing like DVD players. The movie shows Brian getting close to Dom by becoming an up-and-coming star in LA's underground street racing community. The movie splits its focus between Brian's ongoing entanglement with Dom and the gang, and the hype surrounding an upcoming event called Race Wars that will settle Dom's beef with the villain of the movie, Johnny Tran. Yeah, you're gonna need more than that crotch rocket. I got something for you. This movie is sweaty, gritty, cinematic, and overall thrilling, and I think it really sets a solid foundation for the franchise as a whole. There's some really good character work, like Dom's relationship with Brian growing while it seems to be dwindling with his other friends. Yo, Dom! Why'd you bring the buster here? Cause the buster kept me out of handcuffs! And Jesse, the brilliant young mechanic, getting a last minute story arc that made audiences weep. I know I did. I also think, and let me know if this is a hot take, but I think the cars in this movie are the coolest cars in the entire series. Brian's undercover car is the green and blue Eclipse that has gone on to be absolutely iconic in the zeitgeist. Dom drives that bright red Mazda RX-7 that seems kind of way too small for him. <laughs> Almost like his shirts. And the two sickest cars in the whole movie have to be Brian and Dom's orange Toyota Supra and then Dom's blacked out Charger. I'm not even really a car guy per se, but I'd be lying if I said that this movie didn't get me at least a little more interested in the niche. It's not how you stand by your car, it's how you race your car. You better learn that. The end of this movie shows Brian being revealed to be a cop and betraying the trust of everybody he's grown to love. And after an aggressive car chase with Brian and Dom, Brian decides to let Dom go, as Brian is left to answer to the police. I owe you a 10 second car. What an ending! This movie blew up at the box office upon its release and shot Paul Walker to the A-list as a dependable straight man and action hero. The movie's ending left audiences craving for a reunion between Dom and Brian that would give us the delicious drama and breakneck speed that we were savoring from the first film. And with the movie bringing in $207 million off of the humble $38 million budget, the studio began working on the highly anticipated sequel. Only, it wouldn't be a sequel that we were expecting. <music> 2003's Too Fast, Too Furious picks up the story with Brian O'Connor on the run from the police after letting Dom go. 
This led to him fully embracing his life as a criminal. Now living in Miami, the movie offers a change of visual aesthetic as well as a departure from the more serious nature of the first film. The biggest difference that audiences noticed when this film came out was that Vin Diesel wasn't in it. In fact, this is the only installment that he doesn't make at least a brief appearance. Instead, Brian is caught by the FBI and forced to return undercover using his expert driving skills to get hired as a wheelman for Miami's most wanted crime boss, Carter Verone, played by Cole Hauser. Just put in the car what I tell you to, drive it to me and don't let anybody stop you, understand? Yeah. Instead of having the sweaty, testosterone-fueled gang from the first film, we get Roman Pierce, an old friend of Brian who is only willing to forgive his once BFF when the FBI offers him freedom in exchange for help. I need you to come to Miami and drive with me. If you do, they'll take off that anklet and they'll clear your entire record. Brian and Rome are now working together to prove to Verone that they're the right guys for his crew and bring down his operation. I must admit that I have a bit of a soft spot for this film. They played a small prelude that showed exactly what happened to Brian between the first movie and this second movie. Brian basically started from scratch and built himself a new car, which we later see is the badass Nissan Skyline, and begins building his bankroll in Miami. Let your man go, huh? Drop it, I don't want to talk about it. This movie also introduces Tedge for the first time, and Ludacris actually did something kind of amazing with this material. I believe him as this character 100%, and that has to mean something. I'm happy, man. I'm so glad. This thing is my garage, boy. Royal flesh. Give me this, man. So, Brian and his new crew get some help from their woman on the inside, Alex, played by the beautiful Eva Mendez, who also serves as Brian's love interest for this movie. They get closer to Verone, and as the operation gets closer to completion, Brian and Rome are beginning to question if their positions in Carter's crew are more temporary than they thought. You know, I like you, but I still gotta kill you. It's my job. The movie culminates in Brian and Rome having to abandon their orders and save the day themselves. With some awesome new tech from Tej and hilarious antics from Rome, this movie is much funnier than the first one and adds some goof and levity to the otherwise straightforward story. And honestly, I dig it. Alien infidel! Que pasa, Jota? <laughs> With Too Fast, Too Furious not doing as well as the first film, and Paul Walker being tied up with other commitments, the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift once again changes the scenery and moves us from the US to Japan. This movie does not focus on Brian, nor does it focus on Dom, nor does it focus on anybody that we've met so far. It's a completely new story that will eventually go on to be a small part in this very big franchise. I only race for pink slips. Sean is an American import, now living in Japan with his military father after some vehicular shenanigans. While going to high school in Tokyo, he befriends Han, who has the plug on the drift racing scene in town. I might call you once a week or once an hour. I don't care if you're sick as a dog or in bed with Beyonce. This movie is probably the biggest departure from what we would consider the usual in this franchise. It's sort of a karate kid, never back down teen movie with street racing as its vessel for delivery. Sean finds himself in hot water immediately upon arriving in town as he races a bully named Takashi, and he loses. He also destroys Han's car because he is completely unfamiliar with the technique of drifting. Han is the real standout in this movie for me. He's charming, witty, street smart, and a loyal friend. He probably gets the best lines and best jokes in the movie, and the actor has become one of the most beloved characters in this series. Remember the hashtag justice for Han trend? Yeah, well, it's because this dude rules. Grab a chair, we're about to roast some marshmallows. As Sean and Han grow closer, Sean learns how to drift and becomes a more tack-sharp wheelman. The villain of the movie is Takashi and his uncle Kamada, the head of the Yakuza clan. When Sean and Han steal from Kamada, they find themselves in a wild ride of fights, races, and other thrills while the kids attempt to escape the wrath of the crew they stole from. 
This movie has seen quite the resurgence since its initial release, which saw the smallest return of any of the films to this point. A brief cameo from none other than Dominic Toretto himself tied the movie to the main story, but with very little information as to what would be coming next. Since when are you so worried about the details? Rounding home on the more grounded movies is 2009's Fast and Furious. In this one, we get the original band back together with Vin Diesel returning as Dom, Paul Walker coming back as Brian, and of course the awesome supporting cast from the original film. This story focuses again on Dom and Brian. When Dom, now living off the grid in the Dominican Republic, hears that Letty has died and is being buried in LA, Dom has to return home to find her killer and avenge his family. If I were Liddy, I would ask you, no, I would beg you, please, let this go. Brian, now back in the FBI, is also invested in taking down the killer, but for different reasons, as he's also one of LA's most wanted crime lords, and he and Dom will be forced to work together once more to save the day. I honestly think this movie is pretty damn good. I didn't think I would care, but seeing Brian and Dom work together in this film does do something for me. When you blew up your car back there, you blew up mine too. Yeah. So now you owe me a 10 second car. The plan is for the boys to infiltrate a street racing crew, of course, and become the chosen drivers for the Big Bad's heroin run, of course. Brian puts being an FBI agent to use and arrests one of the drivers so he can replace him on the crew. And just like that, the game is afoot. I'm taking to the house now. Good luck. Paul Walker finally got the chance in this movie to bounce off of Vin Diesel again, and it sings on screen. These two dudes really had a good dynamic, and with Vin Diesel really becoming more and more stoic over the years, you actually get to feeling like this relationship has aged and weathered. It's really good stuff, and one of the reasons why I enjoy this movie so much. Buddy came to me to clear your name in exchange for bringing down Braga. She just wanted you to come home! Brian reveals to Dom that Letty was actually working with the FBI to help catch the bad guys in exchange for clearing Dom's criminal record. And unfortunately, Letty was killed on the job. By the end of it all, Dom is caught by the cops, and despite their case that he deserves to be let off, Dom is actually sentenced to 25 years to life in federal prison. And the very end of this movie got me so hyped when I first saw it. We see Brian resign from the FBI, and as Dom is being taken on the bus to jail, we see Brian, Mia, and the crew close behind, ready to spring Dom from jail and get back to business. Now, normally this is where I'd tell you which of these movies are required and which ones to skip, but seeing as we still have a whole other half to this saga, I'm gonna have to save that for next time. For now, I would love to know your thoughts on the Fast and the Furious franchise and which movies out of the ones we covered you would consider essential. Okay, so which one do you want? I want them all.